I am Father Jerry Dias uh, here in the Catholic Media to give you a short reflection and how do I understand when I say Holy Trinity? Today is the Feast of the Holy Trinity. First of all, wish you a very happy feast to all of you uh, listening to me uh, at this time. Now, first of all, most of our activities, most of our programs, in particular our prayer and mass, begins with in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What a wonderful way to begin our prayer, to begin our Eucharist, to begin any of the activities that we do. Wonderful way to begin because we are calling on the name of the Trinity, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. What a wonderful reality that we are living, that we are trying to understand. At times it's difficult to understand uh, that is why sometimes there is a story of St. Augustine who went to the seashore and there was a little boy uh, who was trying to uh, bring water from the sea and fill the hole on the sand. And St. Augustine asked the boy, what are you trying to do? He said, I'm trying to uh, bring the sea to this hole. And uh, Augustine said, you must be crazy, that's, that's impossible. Uh, then the boy apparently says to St. Augustine, this is what you theologians do. You try to understand such a vast mystery and try to put into a small hole. You cannot. And when he, he was startled at the, the answer that boy gave and he looked behind and the boy was vanished by then. Brothers and sisters, this is the Trinity. Trinity is a mystery. Though we try to comprehend, but it's difficult at times to comprehend fully the, the understanding of the Trinity. The Trinity uh, is this, what happens, why do we call it a mystery? The mystery of the Most Holy Trinity consists of this, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, God the Father is the, is the Creator, the Son, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit as, as the sustainer, sustainer uh, of the universe, of the world, and of each one of us, or in other words, sanctifier or counselor. This is the mystery of the Trinity of persons, three persons in one Godhead. Now, logically, and, and still we say one Godhead, three persons. Now, logically or mathematically, it is impossible uh, to understand how is it possible three persons but yet one God. It's not three gods, one God in three persons or in other words, three attributes of one God. And now this is what we are trying to understand uh, the, when we celebrate this feast. Now this feast, uh, basically, uh, we celebrate the doctrine of the Trinity or the, uh, the understanding that church gives us of the Trinity. Uh, when the disciples were sent on a mission, he tells them, go and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hence, the apostles also were part of the Trinity because they are continuing in the work of the Trinity in the name of the Trinity. Now we as priests, we do the same. We, we continue the mission that God gave to apostles and God gives us. And you there listening to me, you also do the same mis mission in your own families. You begin or you become one with the Trinity when you call upon the name of the Trinity. So make sure that every day we call upon the name of the Trinity when we begin any activity, prayer, mass, or any programs. And in this way, we become one with the Trinity that one God had. Now, uh, Trinity also reminds us of family love. Trinity is nothing but a family of love. And this family of love has their relationship with each other. And this way, they become one unit, one person, uh, one, one Godhead. And because they share that love with each other, love with each other. And this way, we are also called to share that love with each other. With each other. Now, if God has created each one of us in his image and likeness, which means we are also, we are also striving to be you know, like that image, image that God has given to me and you. Let us not make any distinction 
we are all children of God because God who created us. If God did not make that distinction by creating all of us in his image and likeness, who am I to make that distinction? Who are you to make that distinction? We are not gods. We are not ordained to make those distinctions. Rather, we are asked to bring everybody together because when God created us, we are all children of God. We have that relationship with each other. Maybe you listening there may not be my blood relation, but when we talk about the Trinity, we are all connected. Whether we are Christians, Muslims, Hindus, we are all connected. We are all children of God. Let's not make that distinction because Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is one union, one unity, which unites the whole universe, whole of humanity. Today, also, this week, as we celebrate the independence of this nation, Golden Jubilee, we remember this reality that we all share that relationship. We all become one because we are all children of God. Let us not make distinction. Let us become one. Let us grow in that freedom because God uh, prayed through Jesus Christ when he prayed in John's Gospel, chapter 17. Father, they all may be one as I and you are one, as I and Holy Spirit are one. Hence, the paraclete is here for us to protect us, to sustain our faith, to, uh, to give the teachings of Jesus Christ and continue Jesus' teachings in this world. That is the role of the paraclete. That's, that is the role of the advocate that Jesus Christ assured each one of us. Therefore, today, let us remember, as we celebrate this important feast in the church, let us remember that Holy Spirit will make sure that we are all united. Sometimes we might have the difficulties in our families, for example, uh, the relationship of love that we have in our families between husband and wife, spouses, the relationship is broken because of various reasons, because of misunderstanding, doubts, infidelity, and so and so forth, that relationship is broken. Let us pray that our union, that our relationship always remains not broken because the, the Trinity wants us and expects us to remain together, not separate. Difficulties will always be there, but with the help of God, with the help of the Trinity, we can always remain together. And also sometimes children and parents get separated. There is division for whatever reasons. Sometimes it's selfish motives, self-vested interests. Let us ask God, let us ask Trinity to give us that strength, give us that faith to remain always united, not separated, even then at times we might get separated, but to bring together. And that is what we try to do in our church. In our churches, we try to bring everybody closer to the Lord. And that is what our church teaching, our Lord taught us, so that they all may be one in us as we are one with each other. Today, I would like to wish each one of you a very happy feast of Holy Trinity. As we celebrate this important feast, let us invoke uh, the blessings of the Trinity on each one of us by calling on, by blessing, by beginning our day, our programs, our activities every day, every time in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.